Coming up on Fresh Dev, part three of WordPress plugin development, actions, hooks, filters, oh my. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Fresh Dev. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Scott. Scott, I almost called you Dan. I do that quite often. I apologize for that. This is the show where we help you, hopefully, with your web WordPress web development needs. Um, we just hit over a thousand fans on YouTube, so yes. I'm super, super excited about that. Thanks, guys. In the last shows, Dan said that we have to up the ante to 10,000 fans. Ooh. So I guess that's the number that we're <laughs> shooting for now. Uh, are there 10,000 developers around the world? Maybe. Yeah, Maybe. That Scott so. can help. <laughs> um, this is part three of WordPress plugin development. Last two shows, we uh, you can go back into the YouTube channel and find out. Um, but we started with the real basics, the foundation. What kind of plugin am I going to create? How am I going to do it? Looking at other plugins, what exists? GPL licensing. And then we started talking, in show number two, we started talking about the file structure. Multiple files, single files directories, all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. it's a little bit of performance. Uh, and then where are you going to put this plugin when you're done? Most likely WordPress.org uh, repo. So we talked about things like that. Now show three, episode three, part three, um, the trifecta, if you will, <laughs> um, go Bruins, will yeah. be <laughs> the WordPress hooks. What are they? How do we use them? Why should we use them? That kind of thing. So Scott, uh, tell us what hooks are all about. All right, so yeah, getting into a little bit of development here. Um, basically, hooks are an easy way to inject, place, put, introduce, you know, get your code into WordPress. Um, you know, you, you have different uh, areas to, to put your hooks, um, whether it's in the beginning of WordPress output or the end of WordPress output. Um, they're basically used to modify the default behavior of WordPress, and many plugins use them to accomplish their tasks and goals. Uh, and there's probably thousands of them out there uh, some you know maybe more common than others some maybe not so uh, not as common right so like you were in your one of your notes here you say think like an assembly line one of the, the ideas we talked about before the show started was let's say you're going to make a Facebook like plugin mm -hmm. right or a social media share plugin right most commonly on a WordPress blog you'll see those before the content and then maybe after the content mm -hmm. This is what these hooks will help us kind of do in exactly. a sense. Yep. We write the code to make the share plugin. So like all this code right in here is all our custom code. But then the hooks allow us to place it, not place it, move it here, move it there, that kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. So getting back to the assembly line, if you had a nice working assembly line and you, you take a look at it and you say, hey, I need to get this guy or this girl from the end of the line, move her, move her to the beginning, move him to the beginning, um, or I need to even just put a new worker at mm -hmm. this cer certain point. Um, you know, we'll take a new worker, we'll put him there, and now, you know... It's interesting you say workers and not parts, because the code is the parts in this sense, I'd imagine. Yes, yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, yeah, worker, part. Awesome. Um, so some of the examples, or the, what's the most common action slash filter that we that we run into yeah i, I don't know if or it's, at least that you think so. yeah i mean uh, there could be other ones out there uh the content mm -hmm. um and if you're developing with wordpress you'll know that this is all, also a function within wordpress but um what makes the difference between a filter and the function okay so a filter um the content filter is actually called within the content function so mm -hmm. the content function outputs the content of the post mm -hmm. your headings your paragraphs your images mm -hmm. the content filter will allow you to modify that content before it's actually output so you can say put my share inject my share buttons you know before or mm -hmm. after the content mm -hmm. um, and here's my function to go ahead and do that that's awesome yeah. and that's part of the power of wordpress right i mean that's yes. why when you get under the hood of WordPress, although many developers might be like, "No, nah, I'm going to make my own CMS," or you know, I'm yeah. not going to, I'm not going to look at the codex and, and figure out how WordPress is doing this. I know what I'm doing. I'm a developer. Um, once they start to see the power of this stuff, then it really all starts to 
fall like dominoes, right? Yeah, that's correct. And they, uh, this is called the plugin API, by the way. And they have a whole resource on on the codex, you know, describing, um, you know, all the different actions and uh, filters that you can use, uh, you know, to go ahead and, and get your functionality working properly. Um, the next one that we just want to highlight is probably uh, another more common one: uh, WP and Q scripts. And you can use this to enqueue scripts or styles either in the head section or the footer section of your HTML document. And um, you'll want to use this function, uh, sorry, this action, um, because you can specify dependencies. So let's say you, you wrote a jQuery script, um, and it re, you know, your script requires jQuery. You can tell WordPress, my script requires jQuery, so load my script after jQuery has been loaded. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty powerful as well. Pretty amazing. Um, so, the the action hook versus the filter hook is, is there one that gets used more often than than not, or, or is it just a case by case basis? That's a good question. I think it's probably case by case. Um, if I had to go out on a limb, I'd say you probably would use actions more than filters. Mm -hmm. More often than not, um, you're going to want to perform functionality rather than modify. Uh, you know, data, but it all depends. You you might use filters way more in your plugin um, yeah. than actions. Yeah, because so. I, I I just know that like if I'm some like you know when I start trying to learn something, especially like some more development stuff or even some PHP stuff, I know there's all like this best practice stuff. And yeah, hey, you know, this is one of these fields where you get to kind of process of elimination. You can kind of hack away and hey, this is not really working. So <laughs> let me focus on something else. So I'm just curious if there's one that somebody should really focus on. Like you should really learn action hooks versus filter hooks. What's more useful? Because typically what people are going to do, especially when they're starting out, they might tell somebody, hey, I can make a website for you. I, you know, but I just need to kind of push WordPress to make it look a little differently on the front end because this is what the client wants. Or this is what my buddy wants. So I'm helping him create a site. Mm -hmm. uh, which one helps change the way a WordPress site looks more often than not? Is it the action, the filter, or combination? I think a combination. And okay. they actually, they serve their, their, uh, they both, you know, they're both specific. So uh, actions, you know, are, are to perform a certain action or, or, you know, put your own code in a certain spot. Um, functions modify data. So they are separate. Uh, again, to make a site look different, um, it all depends. I think it's a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. Uh, it can, can be accomplished both with actions and filters. Okay. Um, so, for example, you might want to modify post data, you know, using an action hook when the post is published. They mm -hmm. have a hook, um, you know, publish post. And you could, you know, do anything. You could send an email to yourself mm -hmm. or somebody, you know, when a, user, a certain user publishes a post. Mm -hmm. um, so getting into more of the, you know. And that's an action hook. That yeah. would be an, what an action hook does. Correctly. Correct. And yes. then the filter hook, what, what would we throw in there? That would be... Well, that would be probably our share buttons like we talked about. Itself. So if okay. we're making like a Facebook like or, yep. you know, a, a share, you know, plugin. Um, we would could use the content filter to, again, put our share gotcha. buttons before or after, gotcha. um, <clears throat> you know, the content. Gotcha. So... so you know, I'm trying to. What I'm trying to do is play devil's advocate and kind of try to really <laughs> simplify this for somebody who's just diving into this. If you thought of all this code like the Matrix waterfall coming down, right? Yep. You're filtering out this code and you're catching right about. You know, you got your like sifter filter <laughs> thing out and you caught something right here and right before that actually gets processed, you're gonna slap in your share button or you know, put it up here instead of where it comes down here. Yes. Kind of filtering out all that code as it gets processed. Yes, that's correct. Very cool. Definitely. Uh, so how do we make this stuff happen? How do we actually engage this stuff? How do we kick it into gear? So uh, what the first thing you want to do is you want to create a function, um, you know, to execute when the event or action or filter occurs within WordPress. Um, and you'll get all that set up. And then you want to hook into that. That's, that's why they call them hooks. You'll hook into that by using either the add action function or the add filter function. They're mm -hmm. very similar in terms of their syntax, but again, two completely different, um, you know, uh, uh, concepts. Gotcha. Um, so using, uh, going a little bit further into the functions, uh, add action and add filter, they both take four parameters. Um, the first one's going to be the tag or which action or filter you want to hook into. <clears throat> again, we talked about the content. We talked about published posts. There's probably thousands of them out there. Um, and the second function is going to be the function that you want to add to that, you know, filter or uh, action. So 
that's going to be the name of your function that you just created. Um, the priority is an optional parameter. It's defaulted to 10. Basically allows you to say, hey, I want this to occur before all of the other filters that are attached to this um, or way after. And, and by doing that, you would, if you want it to occur you know, pretty much first, you would set a priority of 1. And if you wanted to occur last, you could set something like, you know, 999 to make sure it was, you know, the last thing executed. Gotcha. Uh, and then the accepted arguments. Mm, I find myself using this uh, sometimes, but not too often. I think more so with filters. Um, uh, add action and add filter <coughs> except one parameter, uh, sorry, one argument by default. So your function that you are writing will be able to accept one argument. If you need to accept like five, you would change this number to five arguments. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, you in your function, you would create that based upon those five arguments. Awesome. So I got, I got a boatload of questions <laughs> that I'm, I'm sure that the beginner out there might be looking at saying, okay, let's figure this out. All right. All those custom functions that you were talking about, those all reside in our part two where we structured that code, right? So that custom, all that custom PHP functions that Scott's talking about that you're hooking and filtering into, that all existed in part two. We figured out where we were going to put that. We yes. organized it. We have our custom code in there. Yep, that's correct. And you may, you know, depending on how you're coding it, if you're doing a, uh, a functions file, you need to probably prefix your functions. We talked about that last week awesome. just to make sure that they, they're not uh, clashing with other functions. Um, and then, yeah, if it's in a class, you don't really have to worry about that. But yes, all that is, you know, what we talked about last week. That's where you would put these functions. Tremendous. Now, actions, filters, parameters, do these actions and filters only have these four parameters? Or are there more or less, depending on the situation? Uh, well, the functions to actually hook into these actions or filters, mm -hmm. they only take four parameters. Gotcha. But your function could take, you know, whatever you're, yeah, you're your modifying, custom, yeah. your, your share buttons, for right. instance, could take up to five different arguments. Gotcha. And that would be the accepted args. Gotcha. Um, you'd set that number to five and you'd. You know, you might take in a post ID. You might take in exactly. the actual content. But we um, know that we're dealing with tag function to add priority and accepted args right off the bat. Yep. You, so you know you have to have that stuff working right. Yeah. Uh, you don't really, you don't have to set uh, priority or accepted arguments. Those are optional. Gotcha. You do have to know which hook uh, action or filter you're going to hook into and also what the name of your function is because you need to pass that into the uh, add action or add filter functions. And I want to make one note on filters. You have to return some type of data. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if it's the content that you're hooking into to modify, you have to return that content. Even if you didn't make a change to the content, um, you'd still need to return it so that way other functions down the line, including WordPress, can you know output that correctly. That's awesome. So something to note about filters. Good stuff. Um, which leads me to some of the resources that we have. How do people find out what hooks to, to hook into? Uh, you say there, there's possibly thousands. What do we have um, uh, the, out there? So the WordPress Codex does a pretty good job um, of listing them in their plugins API documentation. However, um, they 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 don't list all of the uh, hooks. So you may or may not run into a case where you're trying to find maybe more advanced, but you're trying to find a certain place to put your functionality. You, you need to find the hook. Um, Adam Brown, he's uh, part of the Department of Political Science at uh, Brigham Young University. He's created uh, an entire database of all these hooks. Uh, and you can browse it by, you know, looking at all the hooks, just filters, just actions, by WordPress version, so you can really, you know, narrow it down. Again, if you're building a plugin that you want to be compatible with, like, WordPress 3.0, uh, you might take a look at that section of the database, and you're able to say, okay, this existed in 3.0, this didn't, you know, what can I do, um, so on and so forth with that. Uh, and there's uh, a couple of other resources as well, wpseek.com. Theirs is pretty similar to Adam Brown's, um, they, again, allowing you to browse using different filters uh, for your searches. Uh, and then, of course, the WordPress, WordPress Codex. They have a filter reference and an action reference. Uh, one thing I want to point out about those uh, is I believe they're actually in order of execution for the most part. Mm -hmm. So you'll see that, you know, the init uh, action hook will be at the top of that list. And then w WP footer is one of the last actions to occur. So that would be probably towards the end of that list. Right. So a few things going on here. If you're going to be a good standing WordPress citizen <laughs> developer, 
and you're creating these plugins and you're using hooks, it's important to know that one, you should be constantly updating your plugin with new features maybe, but more security stuff and, and keeping up to date with WordPress. But if mm -hmm. you don't touch your plugin for a year, potentially those hooks could be gone from the, the current version of WordPress. And then that's when it comes, or that's when the user, end user will have issues using your plugin with WordPress. And that's when you should uh, be wary of these things to go back and fix. Yes, definitely. I, I'd say the more common ones like the content, we keep <coughs> referring to that. Yeah. That one will be around probably for WordPress's right. lifetime. However, if they for some reason need to change the init hook to WP init, then you no longer have that hook you know, to, to tie into. So mm -hmm. definitely need to be aware of that. Um, there are some hooks that have been depreciated and in the newer versions, there's hooks that have been added. Um, mm -hmm. You can actually suggest hooks to WordPress. Um, you know, they, they, they outline that on their website. Mm -hmm. So you're able to, uh, you know, say, hey, I, I think we need a hook here and here's why. And, mm -hmm. and they might put it in or they might not. So Awesome. And one last thing before we wrap up. Um, can you make your own hooks within your plugin to allow other developers to hook in and you hook into their hooks and then hooks hook into hooks? <laughs> is that possible? Yes, that is. Definitely. You can create your own hooks and filters. Um, and there's two functions to do that. One's called do action. Okay. And that will, you'll be able to create an action hook from that. And the other one is called apply filters. Okay. And you'll be able to create your own filters with that. You come up with your own names and then you tell, you tell the developers, hey, this is the name of this hook then they can hook into that. That's so awesome. WordPress uh, as that functionality. Maybe we'll talk about that in part four coming up. That sounds good so, to me. Everybody, tremendous stuff on this episode. <laughs> I know I learned a lot. I hope you did too. What do you want to know about developing your first WordPress plugin? Uh, or you've been creating plugins for a while now and you want us to you want to chime in with some best practices let us know in the comments uh, our new lofty goal is 10,000 fans or subscribers on YouTube please go ahead and hit subscribe check us out at slocumstudio.com if you need themes or other WordPress help we're there to help you uh, so do check us out slocumstudio.com slash subscribe to join the mailing list thanks everybody thanks guys